And the dollar's dominance is holding its ground. A new report by Morgan Stanley says the U.S. dollar's dominant reserve currency status is likely to endure here. So the firm noted that the dollar's influence in the global economy remains strong. This week, uh, the dollar hit 34-year highs against the yen and five-month peaks against the euro. Uh, the dollar has been tested uh, in recent years through, uh, you know, with its rivalry with China, wrangling Washington's debt ceiling and more, uh, just to list a few. But the most talked about alternative, the Chinese yuan, has fallen short as a credible challenge. Uh, the firm expects only a moderate and gradual decline in the dollar's use internationally. And regarding uh, this topic, I wanted more discussion uh, because, you know, whenever it comes up, uh, there's always a lot of attention on it. So I invited senior analyst at FX Street, Joseph Trevisani. Uh, here are his, his, his thoughts on the subject. Thank you very much for being here today again, Joseph. Always great to uh, chat with you. So we're talking about the dollar today because Morgan Stanley released a report saying that uh, to them, uh, the dollar being as the reserve currency is going to stay that way for a while. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on this. I mean, why can't the world just move away from the dollar? Thank you for having me. The biggest problem, probably twofold. One is that there really isn't any alternative. If you look at the last transition from a different reserve currency, which was the British pound, the United States as a major world power, as a major economy, was waiting to take over the stage. There is nothing now that can replace the dollar, either as far as trust goes, accessibility, legal status, or size of market. What about gold? We're seeing central banks stock up on gold right now. Can't we go back to a gold standard and then potentially move away uh, from the dollar to gold? Well, there are a couple of problems with gold. One is there's not a whole lot of it and there's not really enough of it to support the idea of gold-backed currencies. Um, the world is also very used to a floating rate. It's been more than 50 years now. So I don't think gold is really an alternative as a basis for the global economy. So in that Morgan uh, Stanley report, uh, they mentioned uh, the Chinese yuan, uh, saying that it's the most talked about uh, alternative. And we know that China's economy is second to the U.S. Um, yes. and, and some argue that potentially one day China's uh, economy could overtake the U.S. And sure. wouldn't that uh, be a potential uh, substitute for the dollar if that day happens? Well, as the China's economy may be second to the United States in size, but its position as far as trust and a custodian of assets is far, far behind the United States. I don't think any investors would trust their long-term plentiful reserves to the administrations of the Beijing government. In the United States, there is a legal system that the world respects and that you can find outlet for your grievances. I don't think anyone believes that about China. What if China becomes the world's um, biggest economy with the uh, military backing that up? Uh, I mean, yes. production happens, a lot of it actually in China, uh, a lot of factories there. So it has uh, some economic might there to sort of persuade yes. people, uh, if you will, to use their currency. That is true. And, you know, if the, if the Chinese economy overtakes the United States, it becomes, and it is right now, in many, in many cases, a greater consumer of resources on many types of resources in the United States. And that would, of course, put pressure on resource suppliers, and they would probably come from China to price and accept payment in yuan. Yuan is not, however, a floating currency. It's managed by the, by the Chinese government, and it's tightly controlled by the Chinese government. So the idea that that would become a floating currency, a means of payment around the world, is certainly not anywhere on the horizon. An additional problem, of course, and one that I think might precipitate some sort of result that you're talking about would be a conflict, military conflict between the United States and China over Taiwan that the United States lost. I think that could be the event that might precipitate some sort of movement. What about the euro, uh, the European economy uh, and, and, and their uh, government bonds? Uh, is that uh, a place where could potentially compete uh, with uh, the U.S. Uh, dollar and the Treasury? It is, and I think it has. I think there has been movement 
to European bonds. But what you have to remember, there really isn't any European bond. There are national bonds. There's the German, the German Bund. There's the UK Gilt, which, of course, is not a member of the EU anymore or the ECB. The French bonds. And once you go down from there, the economies and the national bond markets are smaller and smaller and smaller. If you had a euro-wide bond administered by the ECB, that might be a different story. But you don't. You still have the national markets. All right. Thank you very much for your time today, Joseph. Always great talking to you. Always, always nice to be on. Thank you very much, Don.